Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Wednesday, September 27th at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Trying something new. We got a little corner box here where you can see me. And we're doing a space weather update. So take a look at the magnetometer. It's going crazy here. If we go to ACE Solar Wind, uh, you can see here where the density decreased as the speed increased over the last 12 hours. And what that brings for us is we've... Uh, going into geomagnetic storm at K6. There could be some health effects with this minor. Don't worry about it. Let's take a look at the sun and see what is bringing this about real quick here. You can see some plasma surging here on the surface and it'll translate over to here. Take a look at this plasma filament here. It's massive, probably 50 times longer than the Earth. Take a look at the other picture. Uh, 131 angstroms. That's not running. Here's 193. Well, what I wanted to talk about tonight is uh, the two plasma, uh, solar wind and plasma CMA modeling softwares that exist. This is ISWA. The other one is the WAS or the WSA Enlil, the WSA Enlil spiral. Both of these are large-scale physics-based prediction models for the heliosphere used by space weather forecasters. They predict cor coronal mass ejections and solar wind streams. I'll leave links to all this. So if you go to the WSA Enlil solar wind predictor, it'll come over here. It'll show you the dates and the prediction times on what's going to happen. Notice here Earth going through a plasma density increase and down here you sh it shows radial velocity. You could pause it, you can move it around forward and backward, but what I want to show you is the timestamp in the corner, it's the 27th correct today. It's not really showing us going into any plasma density change. That's According to this model up here, it's not going to hit us until the 31st. So look at this band and that's when it's hitting us there. Increasing on these two areas right in this flux. You can see how they're predicting this based on the model. We're back here. So what we're experiencing geomagnetic storm on according to this model is that stream right there that just hit us the end of the 27th going into the 28th. See it right here? And there'll be another one hitting us on the 1st to the 2nd right there. So I predict that this one, geomagnetic storm is going to be a little worse based on these models. And at spaceweathernews.com you can come and see this or you can go to iswanasa.gov. I'll leave links to all this. I'll also leave this description here of the WSA Enlil model and what it really does, forming a spiraling shape coming off of the sun due to the sun's rotation, blah, blah, blah. But this is where you can get familiar with what the actual modeling is and how it's done. But what I wanted to point out, interesting, I'm like Enlil and I googled it. Enlil is a Mesopotamian god like Enki. He's one of the supreme deities of the Mesopotami Mesopotamian pantheon. He decreed the fates. His command could not be altered, and he was the god who granted kingship. Very interesting. I wonder if there's a connection between this Enlil and this Enlil. Just thought I'd point that out. Let's come over to see what they said here at uh, spaceweather.com. In fact, they're saying that there's a G2 storm uh, happening. We can confirm that. Earth moves into a stream of fast-moving solar wind. Storms like this do not rank as major space weather events. Nothing really to be worried about. Um, here over at Solar Ham, you can get a little bit more details. September 28th, uh, K6. September 29th, the three-day forecast, K5. And then the 30th, K4. I'm saying that the day after this, it could ramp back up into K6 or 8. What we could be looking at is some earthquake activity. Here's this massive coronal hole and this is the wind stream that we are receiving causing us to go into geomagnetic storm here. So if we look at the solar wind this wind stream here 
this uptick to 700 kilometers per second, the temperature increase here to 10 to the fifth, it's because of region number 32. Now this massive coronal hole is massive, and I'm sure you'll agree. We come look at it over here at 193 angstroms, it doesn't look as impressive. I don't know why this isn't playing. Needs a minute to download. We haven't been here. But these massive coronal holes have been linked to massive earthquakes. So with this geomagnetic activity headed our way the next few days, we're going to be in a K6, maybe K7 geomagnetic storm. There are geomagnetic storm health risks associated with that. Seizure, blood pressure, acute coronary syndrome, heart attacks, palpitations, radiation risk, suicide risk. Uh, these increase as you go closer towards the pole. I'll leave links to that, but we want to be watching for a major earthquake or earthquake uptick in the next few days. So be advised, be aware of that. Tell me how you like this little square down in the corner. Um, if it helps, if it's cool, if it, if it works for you. Let me know what else I can put in these space weather updates uh, or explain to you as far as how space weather works and how you can go look at it. Guys, if you like what you saw and you haven't subscribed, do so. It's down here in the corner right here. And share this with like-minded individuals. Be safe and thanks for watching.